What's up my dear friends of the world, Paul the Trombonus here, and in this video I want to share with you what's inside my trombone case so that way you can be prepared in different musical situations. I've been in a ton of different musical situations and I found when I put what's inside here right now that I felt pretty comfortable and confident in different musical situations. So let's get right to it. If you're new here, my name is Paul the Trombonus. I'm a professional trombone player in Los Angeles and we were one of the first trombone internet channels. So let's get right into what's inside here. First, what is this case? This is a Re Reunion Blues gig bag. It's a vintage one, I think it's from the 70s. And it's made out of leather and it's nice, but you gotta be very careful with the gig bags. Gig bags are soft and everything. And you gotta be careful with them because one wrong move, you can really damage your instrument. So I don't really recommend them that much, but as long as you're very aware of it, we can use them. If you have like a real rare horn or something like that, that's irreplaceable, maybe you wanna reconsider a gig bag for extensive traveling, all right? So here we go. What is inside here? Well, the first thing we got inside here is you definitely wanna have your mouthpiece. This is my Dennis Wick Heritage. 6PS mouthpiece. Love this mouthpiece. And this is the thing about mouthpieces. You not only want one in your case, but you also want one in the glove compartment of your car. Because sometimes we have these somewhere out through the house or on a different horn, and then we go to the gig and we're like, oh my gosh, we don't have the mouthpiece. So what I discovered is just you have one inside your glove compartment of your car. Not only can you buzz when you're on the road to get some practicing in, but you have peace of mind knowing that you have a backup just in case you have forgotten it. And I have heard stories from lots of different trombone players that they have forgotten and different instrumentalists have, as well, forgotten them and it's just good to be prepared. I did forget mine once and I had one in the glove compartment. I'm like, thank goodness I did that. Okay, and I actually have a reoccurring nightmare. This is what happens when you get really into music and everything. You have reoccurring nightmares of showing up to a gig with no mouthpiece. I don't know what that is all about. I've had that. It's happened throughout my life. Or being late to the downbeat. Oh gosh, that's another one. Woo, we don't want to do that. Okay, so we got the mouthpiece. The next thing we have in our case is you got to have your pencil. So this is important. You don't want to be in a situation where you are in a rehearsal and you're asking to borrow a pencil. First of all, it looks unprofessional. And what I discovered is as little thing as a pencil like that will get your name and your reputation passed on to person to person. It's, I know it's weird. It's not like someone's going to say, hey, they got a pencil, let's hire them. It's not like that. It's those little details where subconsciously people are like, oh, that person's uh, very punctual and uh, high quality person to call for this and they may not realize it but just as something as that little pencil helps for your reputation so I recommend to have a pencil the next thing I have inside my case is I have a washcloth the reason I have a washcloth because I can wipe down the slide if too much lubricant gets on it and that way we can make sure that we are cool. Now this is just a normal washcloth, nothing fancy about it, normal washcloth. Make sure that you wash this sporadically, periodically in your life because you don't want any gooey gobbleness on this thing because it's gonna be crazy if you do that. Okay, the next thing we have here is lubricant. So I go back and forth. Sometimes I use slide and mix. Sometimes I use the Yamaha slide stuff, whatever I got on me. They both work good for me. So I use them both. And that's how that goes. What else is in here? I have an extra pencil just in case. Like I said, with the mouthpiece thing, I want to make sure that I'm cool. Now we have our normal trombone bag, but then we have an, in a mute bag. Our mute bag has a whole other series of things inside of it. But right now we're just talking about the trombone bag. I'll do a video in the future on what's in the mute bag. Okay. So we're good on that one. The next thing we like to have in here is I like to have this little brush for the mouthpiece because look if you don't clean your mouthpiece every once in a while you can transfer some germies you know little germs we don't want them on our lippies okay why am I saying germies and lippies I'm saying them to emphasize a point here on also if it's not clean you can get a pimple down here so look, I got a little pimple right here. I had to take a few days off and it's so annoying. I'm so used to playing every single day. I hate to take the time off, but I don't have anything scheduled. So I'm taking the time off so it heals properly. And it's because I didn't clean off the stupid mouth. All right. So I'm telling you right now, clean your mouthpiece. You can just use some dish soap, some normal hand dish soap. Clean it on out and make sure it's all good. We also want this brush, this little brush guy. We put them inside here and we get out things in there because you will find that if you don't properly give hygiene to your instrument, to your mouthpiece, you will get sick more than most people. Now, once I realized that, I don't get a sick really ever. Like when I didn't do that, because I realized that when I wasn't cleaning my instrument, it's probably spreading different germs and stuff like that. So now I clean things, all right? I clean stuff, that's what I do. The next thing we got in here, now this is really important too, and I don't see enough musicians using this and, and they need these. Um, these are earplugs. Okay, I've had these earplugs forever. I got these in 2004. Wow, a long time ago. 
When I was a student at Berkeley, I got a little email that said, hey, attention students, we're doing a special promotion over at Emerson College. I think that's the college. One of the, I don't know the name of the college, don't quote me on it. One of the nearby colleges, walking distance, where we will give you 50% off on some custom earplugs that fit to your ears perfectly. I was like, sure. So I did there, they tested my ears, and then they gave me these form-fitting earplugs. And I love them. I also have another set of earplugs. I don't have them with me right now, but they're on my keys. They're on a keychain, and there's some good earplugs too. You want to save your hearing. You want to make sure that you can have a nice, long lasting career and your hearing's cool. So when you are in front of a lead trumpet player that is piercing like a laser, the last thing you want to do, imagine sitting right in front of that is to do that. And I've done it. I've done tons of rehearsals like that. But I actually found that when I use earplugs in loud situations like this, I actually play better because I can hear myself more because the internal vibration, it resonates through my inner bone cavities and I feel the vibration of the instrument. And it's a different way of playing. You have to actually learn how to play with earplugs. It's a different way of playing. You play differently. So when you practice with earplugs, you will learn how to play with earplugs, just to let you know. It's not something that's like you put earplugs in and all of a sudden you play the same, you play differently. So you gotta practice with earplugs too. Okay, what else we got in here? The next thing we got in here is if we ever need to clean the instrument and give it a bath, we have our little snake here. It's nice slide. I have another video on how to clean the trombone. We go through all of that stuff together. All right, the next thing we have here is I have a lot of these clips because if you're doing a gig outside and the wind's blowing, last thing you want is everything to blow away. That's scary and it's not fun because if that music blows away and you're holding your trombone, do you think it's going to be fun to run down the street trying to chase that page flying through the air in the middle of a gig? Probably not. So we make sure we have enough of these. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I got like maybe eight of them in there. Just chilling. All right. The next thing we have is this interesting, interesting invention. I don't know exactly what's in it, but I got this, I think, from Phil Wilson back in, back in the day when I was studying with him at Berkeley. And it is some kind of solution. And I've never needed to. This will last you an, an entire lifetime. There's still so much in there. I barely used any. But this is for your tuning slide. If the tuning slide gets stuck, it's like this. It's almost like a Vaseline type of material. And you put it in the tuning slide and it will unstuck, unstick tuning slide stuff. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it's coming in handy. You only put like a little tiny dab on that and the thing will last you like 10 years at least. It's crazy. What else we got in here? We have all the trombonist cards. People don't use business cards anymore, but I have these from back in the day. And that's about it. That's, let's see what else is in here. Oh, we got one of these bad boys. These things, if you're doing a gig and you're wearing a collared shirt, like a white collared shirt or a light colored shirt, sometimes when we play on these brass instruments, the grass will stain your collars. So whenever you see like a trombone player and they got like something right here, that's to prevent the stain happening on the collar. So if you ever have a gig like that, what I do is I put one of these things on so that the shirt doesn't get stained with the brass. That can be an issue if you're wearing a white collared shirt. So this is what's inside this trombone. Now I mentioned the mute bag is a totally different thing. We'll do another video on that, but it, I really appreciate y'all stopping by here. If you found value in this, all I ask is for a little like and subscribe. We're on our mission to 100,000 subscribers to share our love of trombone with the rest of the world. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I appreciate that. Also comment like, I like to hear from you all. We're about half, a little over halfway to our mission to 100,000 subscribers and we're really excited about it. And if you found value in this video, you are going to love this video or this video wherever it appears here. There's gonna be a video that appears here. And make sure to hit like for the YouTube algorithm. Boy, do I appreciate you. I appreciate you tremendously. So this is Paul the Trombonist, signing off.